Super judge and I bless God for this opportunity to bring us truth to you. Are you ready? Let's call for that daily bread. Come on now, let's go. Praise God. Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread, and it's working for me now. Angels, go bring that which I need today to be sustained in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we are talking about walking in spiritual financial intelligence. Open your Bibles with me to Proverbs. Now, we have read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, 13, verse 12 and 13. Trying to let you know that, look, these things are taught by God. These things are taught by God. There is no pastor that will teach you these things and you'll begin to walk in it perfectly until the holy spirit teaches you now you can listen to me i say wow i'll start practicing what um, pastor is sharing goody but i'm telling you the truth you will encounter challenges that i may not be there to explain to you and then you go oh hmm, is this thing really really working so that's what i'm telling you st straight on from the beginning the first principle in walking in spiritual financial intelligence, the first principle is you must meet the Lord. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, you must meet the Holy Ghost. Now, what do I mean, meet the Holy Ghost? Go to one mountain and say, Lord, you must appear to me. No, you must settle down in your heart first. He says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The voice of God. So now you don't hear the voice of God. I'm telling you the truth. Your first challenge is staring you at the face in walking in supernatural or in spiritual financial intelligence. If you don't hear the voice, because you say, okay, so so then why are you sharing this thing? Hey. If you are a believer, you must hear the voice of God. Jesus said it, start up. My sheep hears my voice. My sheep hears my voice. That's what Jesus said. So when you argue, but all of us don't hear God. Okay, oh, you, do you hear God? Um, I can't really say that. I don't can't really say I hear God. Okay, thank you, sir. You have just told me who you are. You are not his sheep. Eh, but, but, but I'm sorry, you are not his sheep. But I'm born again. No, sir, you are not. Eh, hey, hey, you remember that, that fellow who, who Jesus spoke about in that parable of the wedding supper? And, you know, he, 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 told, he, he sent out invitation to some special people. They refused to come. And then he said, okay, go to the street, bring in everyone. Now they went to the street, brought everyone. And this man was going around and saw one who wasn't wearing a wedding garment. And he told him, look, why are you without a wedding garment? And the guy couldn't answer. He says, take him out of this place. Throw him into outer darkness. Uh, okay, but, but why? This man sent his servants to go into the street and invite everyone. So why is he now inspecting to know who's having a wedding garment or not? Will everyone on the street have a wedding garment? Hey, but others had a wedding garment on. So what was the difference? Were they prepared for a wedding? He ought to know that for you to be in that wedding, you've got to have a wedding garment. He ought to know that. See, that was why the master was very angry with him. So you don't say, I'm a child of God, but I don't hear the voice of God. No, no, no. You don't, don't sit down there and be priding over it. It's not something to be proud about. It's something to, to be sorry for yourself about. How then can I claim that I'm a child of God? Imagine a child said, um, who's your dad? Oh, my dad is um, Mr. So-so-so. I said, okay. 
we're going to play three recordings and you tell us which is your dad. Say, oh, no, 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 don't bother. I say, why? I, I can't really tell which is the voice of my dad. I'm like, you're like, huh? Are you sure you're his son? Tell us the truth now. That's just what you're saying. A child that doesn't know the voice of his father, that child is not a child of that person. So don't sit down there and say, how many, how many believers hear the voice of God? Okay, so the question we should be asking truly is, how many believers are there? Yeah, that's the question we should be asking. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. He didn't say, pray for my sheep to hear my voice. He didn't say, my sheep shall be laid hands unto him. He said, my sheep hears my voice. So number one principle I said in walking in financial, spiritual financial intelligence is you must know the voice of God. So how do I know that? simple very simple now in the course of this teaching i'm going to talk on that i'm going to talk on that but, but follow me now everything i'm saying truly if you if you're listening it will lead you to hearing the voice of god but then to say okay today we're talking about how to hear the voice of god i'm trusting the spirit of god we'll talk on that you know so proverbs proverbs chapter three proverbs book of proverbs thank you lord proverbs i'm so excited today you know, I don't know why, because, yeah, I know why. The joy of the Lord is in me, praise God. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Hmm? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not some of your hearts. You know, you know, it's amazing. You, you read the scripture, you quote it, but in practice, you don't do it. You say, how? Ah. Put all your eggs in one basket. Ah, no, 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 no. That's not wise. That's not wise. That's not wise. You have to be wise. <laughs> okay, see now. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's the same thing as saying put all your eggs in one basket. But you see, the basket he's talking about now is the Lord, praise God. Put all your eggs in the Lord, praise God. Yeah, so trust in the Lord with all your hearts, okay? So how do I do that, okay? How do I trust in the Lord with all my heart? First of all, for you to trust in the Lord, there's got to be something tangible for you to trust in. You see now? So, how do I trust in the Lord? Okay, the Bible says, first and foremost, have you come to terms with the fact that you are the one that the Bible is talking about? This is where we all get it wrong. We assume. There is no assumption in this. You know, many years ago, I think let me start from this story now. Many years ago, I was, you know, I, I I moved to the city of Abuja then, and things got so difficult for me. And at some point, I was like, you know what? Because God, Lord, had told me, you know, to stay in Abuja, and things were not working out. And you know, because He told me not to start a church then, you know, see. So it says things were not working. One day, I got upset. Ah, I'm telling you, I got upset. Like, you know what, Lord? I got upset, and I spoke to Him. I said, Lord, you know what? This thing is not working. And I said, I will never forget. I said, I said, Lord, I have parents. They didn't send me out of the house. They love me. So I'm going back. I'm going back to my parents. And that's just when I left school. You know? I'm going back to my parents and, and go pick up life from them. And I traveled all the way to Port Harcourt. And I'll never forget, got into Port Harcourt late in the night because I traveled by road all day. And then I woke up early hours of the morning because when i go home my dad says it's okay so what's going on i said i'm back home you're back home i thought to say god says i said well i'm back you know so of course my dad is a man of god so he said okay that's in the night so maybe he had a dealings with maybe he went to pray or something and in the early hours of the morning i heard the voice of the lord say what are you doing here now you see that i said i heard the voice of the lord now Nobody came to tell me anything. I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I laughed. I said, Lord, you know 
because we had this discussion. Now, funny enough, did we really have a discussion? No, I told him my mind, Chris, that's not a discussion. But here I was, and we had this discussion. I told you I was leaving Abuja. I told you I was coming back home because things were not working. And the Lord said to me, in a very calm way, see, there are many things we learn from God. When you hear authority, you will know. <laughs> Praise God. Now, you don't see this voice that is talking to you. And, and not, not really that is a, my soul, what are you doing here? And everywhere is shaking or uh, the whole cloud. No, no, just in my heart. In my heart. But I know it's the Lord that was talking to me, not my mind. But most times you confuse it to be your mind. But it's simple to know. Your mind cannot be having a discussion with you, an intelligent discussion with you. Think about it. So sometimes you already hear the voice of God, but you don't know. So, so I heard that voice in there. So what are you doing here? I said, Lord, you know I'm here. You know. Now, I wasn't speaking out like when I was hearing, then I was talking out. All this conversation was taking place in my mind. See, my spirit was communicating with God. So what are you doing here? Say, Lord, you know what I'm doing here. And then the Lord said, simple, calm, but you hear the authority in it. <laughs> he said, go back to Abuja. Kaba <laughs> yala You see, you know, when you will not understand these things until you, you read what Ezekiel said that the Lord said to me, son of man, stand up on your feet. And then I said, and the spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. That was exactly what happened. And I was like, go back to Abuja. Like, okay. Um, um, I couldn't say a word again. I went to my dad. I said, I'm going back tomorrow. So I thought he said, you're back. I said, the Lord said I should go back. I said, well, obey the Lord then. So I got my stuff and I left. And that was when the Lord began. Because all through the journey, I traveled by road again. All through the journey, I was like, but Lord, I don't want to go back and suffer the same thing I was suffering before. Me. And then the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, son, when I told you to stay, you didn't ask me, you know, how am I going to live? And he said, I, I was the one that told you not to start a church. I was the one that told you not to do this, not to get a job, not to do that. But then you didn't, you were not careful to ask me, how should you leave? And I said, whoa, I never knew. It was amazing, you know, thinking about it now. Many things, are, the Lord have asked me the same question. You didn't ask me. I told you, you know, sometime, you know, I've shared, shared that testimony with you. And the Lord told me, you have not asked me. Well, I got married. And the Lord said to me, you have not asked me for children yet. Like, how am I supposed to ask you for children? Is it not normal? Praise God. I said, no, you should. And then the Lord opened my understanding to it. Praise God. So he said to me, you didn't ask me how you will leave. I'm like, okay. I was supposed to ask you how I will leave. I you not the one that's supposed to make the things be walking me. I'll just be obeying and do it. I said, no, you ask. I said, okay, Lord, please teach me. How do I leave? How do I handle my finances? How, how? How am I supposed to get money to do everything that I should do? How am I supposed to do these things? And the Lord spoke to me in so clear, simple terms. And I tell you the beauty of the voice of God. As he's speaking to you, he's opening your eyes also. See, what do you mean opening your eyes? Like, oh, no, <laughs> understanding is coming to you. He's speaking to you and your spirit is connecting the, what he's saying to you like, whoa, wow. And that's what I said. That's how you know it's the spirit of God because it will increase your knowledge. It will increase your understanding. So like light, as you're hearing that thoughts go through your mind, light is coming to you. So that's how you know this is the voice of God that's speaking to me. And then you acknowledge him. So now he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart so when the lord said to me go back to abuja i had to obey him why because i knew i had to trust him now you don't trust blindly you trust willingly so when he says go back to abuja in my mind nothing had changed like i ran away from a place 
you're telling me to go back. Nothing have really changed. So why am I going back? But because I know who said, go back, I had to trust him. So I took that first step by making the decision to go back. He didn't tell me things have changed. No, but I took that decision to say, okay, I am going back. So you see, that's where he says trust. Now I trusted him enough that I had to go back to where I ran away from, not knowing what will happen next. But the only thing I knew is he said so. Trust. I really sit down in Port Harcourt and wonder how am I going to leave? You know what? Let me, maybe I should go back to Abuja and try. There is no trust in that. It's a risk you are taking. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up today. <laughs> I wonder how long this thing is going to take. But see, I'm going to be so diligent in bringing them one after the other. It, the reason is to help you. So follow me patiently and let the Lord open your heart and minister truth to you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.